Hey, welcome to the Higher Ed Storytelling University podcast on the EdUp Experience Podcast Network. This is a show dedicated to helping higher ed marketers tell better stories, create better content, and enroll more students. My name's John Azoni. I'm the founder at Unveiled, and we're a video production company working specifically with college marketing teams to make it easy for them to scale up and even automate their student and alumni success stories through our subscription approach. And you can learn more about that at unveiled.tv, and that's U N V E. TV. If you're listening to this podcast for the first time, uh, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you. And if you're wanting your college and university's content to resonate on a deeper emotional level with prospective students, with alumni, with parents, whatever, I want you to subscribe to my free newsletter. Every week I send out tips and insights on creating more emotionally resonant content, including examples and best practices from other institutions, articles and blog posts, that week's podcast episode, and much more. So head over to unveiled.tv slash newsletter and sign up. All right, let's get on with the show. Well, hey, everyone, John here. This week, we are between guests, had some people have to reschedule. So in the spirit of repurposing, here is an episode where I was on the Higher Ed Demand Gen podcast with Shiro Hattori from Concept3D. And we talk about how to tell compelling student testimonials. So I hope you enjoy it. We'll see you next week. Welcome to the Higher Ed Demand Gen Podcast, helping higher education marketing leaders share knowledge about learning, strategies, and tactics that are relevant today. See what you can learn today by listening to one of our episodes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Higher Ed Demand Gen Podcast, hosted by Concept3D. If you like our content, please follow and subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple, or Google, wherever you listen to us. My name is Shiro Tori, and I will be your host today. And I'm really looking forward to talking about how to craft compelling student testimonials and content to enroll, to increase enrollment yield. And for the conversation, I have a very special guest here today. I got John Azoni joining us. He is the owner of Unveiled and also the host of the Higher Ed Storytelling University podcast. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to be here. So, John, I asked all my guests this, right? Tell me what you love about higher ed. I, you know, I think I think within higher ed, there's so much. There's it's such a gold mine for stories, and I think like for for what I do um, with, with telling stories, there's there's such a variety of you know walks of life within a college campus um, and reasons they co- go to college and where they go after college. It's just such a, it's such a transformational time of life um, that I just think that there's, there's so many opportunities to tell meaningful stories uh, within, within higher ed specifically that are unique to higher ed that I, I think that don't exist in the same way uh, in any other context. So that would be my favorite thing about it. Thanks for sharing that. And yeah, I, I totally agree. Like, I'm reconnected with uh, my alma mater, which is the University of Colorado as of recent, just because there's been all this energy and hype around Coach Prime. I don't know if you've heard of him, but I have, um, yeah. Like, yeah, and it, it, those stories are what keeps me like tied to my uh, alma mater. And, you know, it just shows how powerful storytelling really is. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, can you tell us actually a little bit more about your podcast, right? I want our audience to know, uh, you know, what kind of stories and uh, guests you have on your show. Yeah, it's called Higher Ed Storytelling University. Um, and originally it started off as, you know, just a, a platform for me to talk about storytelling, to talk about like, like narrative storytelling and, and how to do that. Well, um, eventually I started having guests on the show and then um, it, it really kind of opened up to uh, what I call lowercase s storytelling, which is, <laughs> which is sort of like the broader accepted term of, of, of storytelling of really like marketing content creation. How, how do you create meaningful content that resonates with, uh, with viewers and tells the story of your institution over time? Um, so on the show, yeah, we do talk about, you know, what it means to tell an actual story. Um, but we also have a lot of guests on that just talk about, you know, marketing that talk about content creation. Um, we've had guests on talking about, uh, email marketing strategies and, and, and how do you, um, how do you connect with people through, through email? So it's a lot of, it's a lot of conversation about, you know, how do you create content either through text or through video, 
uh, that is going to strike the right chord with your audience. Um, yeah, so that's been a lot of fun. I, that's one of my favorite parts about running my business is, is actually doing the podcast. So, so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to, to, to have new people and, and come up with new topics and, and things like that. So. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. This podcast is definitely my favorite part of my job here at concept TV as well. So it's, I'm on board there. Um, what, can you tell us a little bit more about the lowercase S and the capital S? Is there more of a, a backstory there? Well, I think, um, when, when it comes to storytelling, um, like when you say, uh, let me tell you a story, um, someone's going to actually think they're going to expect an actual story. Like this happened to me, then this happened, you know, and then I ended up here and, and blah, blah, blah. If, you know, I always think like, if you're at a party and you know, you, you, you say to someone, oh, I've got a great story for you. And then you just list a bunch of information you know, like, um, our institution is great for all these reasons and blah, 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 you know, and you should come here. They would be like, what's the story, you know? <laughs> so, so I think like s capital S storytelling is like actual stories, you know, but, I, but I think that we use the word storytelling in a broader sense, like it, 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 much in the same way that I think like, you know, Gen Z, uh, will, will say literally, for, for everything the, the literally just means like an emphasis word it doesn't literally mean literally <laughs> so um so i so i think I, I would say there's like capital s storytelling which is actual narrative stories like you would tell this to someone and then this is an actual story and then there's what i would call lowercase storytelling which is sort of the act of creating content over time that as a whole sort of communicates the value of your of your organization and so um we try to embrace both uh both on on the on the podcast got it thanks for explaining yeah that helps me like having lowercase storytelling is like having it more ingrained in, in your overall strategy like in every piece of content that you create like some, somewhere along those lines would i say yeah, I think like, you know, because one thing I pay attention to, and I think it's the cur sort of the curse of being a, you know, a marketer or content creator is like on, on, I'll look on packaging, you know, for like, so like I got this oatmeal recently. It was like, I don't know, my wife bought it, some, some sort of oatmeal. And I, you know, because I like when I'm, you know, when I'm eating cereal or, or something, I'm like, I like read the packaging. And it said like our, our story, and it had the founders like picture on there. Um, and then it was just like, these are from ancient grains of blah, blah, blah from the mountains or I can't remember what it said, but it was really just like talking about the quality of the product. And I'm kind of like, this is a perfect example of like, that's not a story. Like that's, you're communicating the value of your, of your, um, product, which is a very loose interpretation of what it means to tell us to, to do storytelling. So that's kind of what I would call like lowercase S storytelling, which is sort of like, here's the value of what we're offering. Here's our why. Um, and people, and people tend to couch that in the storytelling compartment. Um, but there's a difference between that and like, what's an actual narrative story where there's a character and, you know, there's problems and <laughs> there's some element of transformation. And um, so, yeah, both are good. Both are totally fine. That example helps a lot. So like my example with coach prime would be like the big ass story. Whereas like, you know, the products and goods you sell and the, the, the information behind, you know, what it's, where it's coming from, the history behind the company is that lowercase s. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. That's the first time I've heard someone use the, the differences. So I had well, that's just cause I made it up. I didn't, I, <laughs> <laughs> you won't find that in any textbook. I just, that's just how I uh, think about it. <laughs> maybe it'll become a thing and you'll, you'll get to coin it. That's that'd yeah. be awesome. All right. Cool. Well, like let's, let's jump into these topics here we got today. So, um, first one I wanted to cover is around increasing enrollment yield using social proof and, uh, with unveiled and with your background in lowercase storytelling or, and uppercase storytelling. Uh, you figured out a way to really uh, craft a compelling student testimonial and create that content. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do? Yeah. So um, for, for context, Unveiled, we're, we're a video production company and we work with schools um, 
uh, primarily on a subscription basis for uh, for for telling student and alumni um, success stories or testimonials. Um, and so we kind of work on like a year long sort of view of their uh, storytelling content and drip out monthly um, student alumni testimonials. So we've done a lot of these um, and there are certain um, things that I personally look for in a story uh, when I am working with a school and, um, it really is like, you know, the thing that we're looking for is, is really what, what makes a, a good story. And I, and I would say that's, it comes down to several things. Um, one would be that there is an actual story there to begin with. Now, I, I, I don't think that every testimonial has to be some dramatic story of transformation. Sometimes it is just good to get someone on there, uh, you know, on video um, or or in print, however you do your storytelling, uh, saying great things about the school. You know, that's that's essentially what a review, a Google review, is doing. That's the function a Google review is serving: is social proof. Someone else like me had a great experience, and maybe I could have a great experience too. So those are those are good. Um, and then, but, but I, I think to take that a step further are finding those stories that really have a narrative arc to them. Um, so I, I look at storytelling in a very, very basic sort of three part, you know, structure of like, is there, there's sort of some sort of transformation. So there's an old, old normal, there's the way things were. Um, then there's some sort of turning point moment, and then there's a new normal. And I think that that structure fits really well with student and alumni testimonials, because that's really what you want your college to be doing is facilitating that transformation from they were here, not where they wanted to be in life. And then, you know, and then you catapulted them to this other place which is where they wanted to be in life or maybe in a better place than they even expected they would be. Um, so really it's, it's, it's finding stories that have that, that sort of, that sort of arc of, of transformation. Um, and that can come in, in a lot of different forms. Um, but, but really looking for some sort of, some sort of from and to. So we, we worked with, um, a school recently where it's a business school um, in California and they had uh, w one of the students there was studying, uh, getting his MBA. Uh, but he came to the school because he was, um, he was doing work with human trafficking survivors. Um, and he wanted to further his education in business so that he could take this back to this organization and, uh, you know, further develop this work. Um, and so, uh, you know, then the story became, you know, his experience with, with the business school and all the things that, you know, he kind of went through to be able to then get to a place where he's further in his, um, you know, career or passion for, uh, helping human trafficking survivors and using business as a, as a, as a, as a force for good in that way. So like, I think that's a great example of, you know, there's an actual narrative there. There's that there, it's not just someone on camera saying, I, I, I wanted to go to business school. So I went to business school and it was great. And here's the professors I liked. And, um, you know, I graduated and now I'm, now I have my degree. Um, so there was this, this sort of element of novelty, like there's something deeper than just what it meant to go get an academic experience. Um, but then, then there was also this, 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 this arc of transformation where he, you know, started here, not having the skills, uh, he needed to really do all the things that he wanted to do for human trafficking survivors. Uh, but, but going through this process and then now feeling confident in that. Um, and then in the middle, there's, there's all these, uh, opportunities to kind of insert other benefits. Cause part of his story was he experienced mental health struggles, um, in school. And so it was an opportunity for us to talk about like some of the roadblocks that people, that students will go through at, you know, at your school, um, as, as they're going along, you know, they're, they're experiencing mental health. Do you have the resources for them? Um, how, how are you supporting them in that student journey? Um, and so that, so I, I liked his story because it had some layers to it. 
Um, so that's kind of how I, th I think about story storytelling is finding, finding stories that have like a old normal turning point and a new normal. And, and then within that turning point, I think that's a really, um, powerful spot in the storytelling structure where you can get specific. And I think good stories really are an opportunity to get specific. So, um, obviously someone's on your website or wherever, and they're watching this, this video of the student that went to your school and had a good experience. So they expect, they expect that the student isn't going to say bad things about the school, <laughs> you know, uh, that obviously they're going to say good things about the school, but what specifically, um, can you zero in on? Cause when you land into like, when you get down into specifics, that's where their most, the emotion really lies. That's where people can start to, um, resonate with what this student is saying, see themselves in that story they can feel seen, feel heard, feel understood. Um, so that turning point part of the story, like when I'm crafting questions for, uh, to interview a, a student or alumni with, um, you know, we're crafting questions around those three points. What are, what are, what are questions that are go going to get us responses that tell us like where they were, where, where they ended up, but then also let's, let's really dig into this turning point. Like, was there a moment where you felt like something was changing or you felt like you were in the right place or just you had some moment that was significant in your academic journey. Um, and I think that it's that really that turning point moment that really um, uh, is, is just a, it's just a powerful for, for as social proof for other students to, to hear. Thanks, John. Thanks for sharing that uh, framework. I like how you, went into detail around like making sure to be specific. And I think your use case of, of telling the story around the student resources available was interesting because uh, this relates to another follow-up question I have, but I think most institutions, you know, they have the resources listed on the website or they'll give you the information, you know, uh, with the PDF or printout during your orientation week. And then like, that's it. Right. But like the hearing it come from a student, right. Like, as a testimonial or a video is, is, is a bit different than getting listed on your website or, you know, getting, Hey, we have these resources listed on, on a pamphlet. So, um, I thought yeah. that was unique. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I think that, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Your thought. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, I think, I think that like storytelling is not something that we do once or twice and check the box and call it good. I had Jamie Hunt from a uh, CMO at Old Dominion University on my podcast um, in a recent episode talking about telling stories of people with disabilities and mental health struggles um, are often a big part of that. And um, it, it's, it's, it's so prevalent in, in schools that, uh, and I, I experienced this when I was in college too, of just, um, you know, having some unexpected feelings that you've never dealt with before and to hear stories of students that also feel, feel that way and got help um, or felt supported in some way or even even just that other students felt that way is 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 a really important thing to be doing so it's not always about just marketing your school in the in the course of supporting students in their academic journey through storytelling through helping them relate to others like them um, I think you are marketing uh, your school, cause you're creating it, you're creating an experience, um, you know, where, where people feel seen and heard and, and understood. Um, so yeah, it's, so, you know, th those are, I think we often default to like, who can I get on camera? That's going to say the right things that are going to get people in the door to the school. Um, but storytelling is so much more broad than that. And, and so many opportunities to tell stories of what's going on day to day, um, and, 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 and how are you supporting students that are already in the school too? Yeah. Gotcha. Quick break here. I have a question for you. Have you ever had to manage the production of a video before for your school where you were the person that had to coordinate all the scheduling? Like you had like five people that needed to be interviewed for this thing. And you had to juggle all the schedules and figure out how to line them up for individual slots miraculously on the same day. And on top of that, you had to talk to you like your facilities guy and make sure the door to the engineering lab was going to be 
open at a certain time so the crew could get in there and film some b-roll you had to coordinate volunteers to be in the footage and and blah 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 and 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 right let me tell you something working with an outside video vendor should not look like this unfortunately i've worked with enough video folks to know that the mainstream school of thought is they will coordinate the crew and all the production stuff the editing etc and they will expect you to coordinate all your folks and i'll be honest sometimes there's stuff that the video people just can't coordinate for you like I'm probably not going to email your college's president out of the blue to ask them to be in this video and to coordinate their schedule when they've never heard of me or this project. Like that just makes more sense coming from you at least to get their initial buy-in. But as much as possible, your job should be to get buy-in from all the right people and then introduce those stakeholders to the video producer to coordinate, which is not you. Unfortunately, we live in a world where it just doesn't work like that most of the time. In fact, I talked to a marketing director at a pretty well-known art school recently who told me he hired this video crew to film a couple program promo videos and they paid a lot of extra money. This was a bit of a splurge is the impression I got. And they got two videos out of the deal. And he said to me, all that money we paid and I still had to coordinate everything. Like we paid a premium for someone to do these videos and I was doing all the grunt work. So here's the deal. At Unveiled, one of the things we take really seriously is making sure the process is easy on you. Especially that pre-production process, which is where a lot of the not fun stuff tends to show up. So whether we're working together through our video storytelling subscriptions, a big commercial, or maybe a smaller one-off video project, know that in addition to delivering a great end product, we also have our eyes on making that a smooth and oftentimes fun journey along the way. And even after it's done, we wanna make sure you're set up for success, which is why we give you all the raw footage, all that B-roll and interview footage to repurpose however you want at no extra charge. So if you have video needs right now, don't let the management of those projects stress you out. We are your partners in taking as much work off your plate as possible. So if that's you, I want you to head over to unveiled.tv. That's U-N-V-E-I-L-D.tv and book a call with me. And let's talk about how we can best support you. All right, back to the show. You're kind of already answering this question, but... Um, specific to this period in in the enrollment cycle right now, right? There's a lot of students have been admitted or are maybe still applying, but um, we have, you know, a little over half a year till fall shows up and students show up on class. Are there specific types of student content, student testimonials that you focus in on during this period? I mean, your example with the student resources is probably one, uh, but are there, or do you see specific types of content that your customers come back to you and say, hey, like that was really good, uh, specific pain point or uh, uh, solution that we showed or something along those lines? Yeah, I, I don't really have that that kind of data um, in terms of like specific times of the year when people are, def are my clients are deploying certain pieces of content. But I can say that um, some of the top content uh, that 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 students look for are things like um, Student success stories would be would be there, but also like things like um, what's the food like, what's the housing like, what's the what's the what's a what's a day in the life look like. Some of the content that I find really um, intriguing to to study on YouTube is user generated content of students just making day in the life videos of what's going on. Well, like what you know, this could be like 10, 20, 10 or twenty minute video of the student being like here's a day in the life at such and such, you know, business school, and they're going to class and they're, you know, opening their laptop and blah, blah, blah. And then they're studying back at their dorm or whatever. And I'm always amazed at like, I'm like, this is a long video and people are like, students are watching this all the way through, it seems like, and commenting about like, this was so great. This helped me see, like, this answered so many questions I had about, you know, about the school. So giving, you know, one of the things that, that we advocate for at Unveiled is not just what are the stories you can bring in a, a, a video crew to film, <laughs> you know, but what are, what are stories that, that can, um, that the students themselves can, can tell to their own audiences, um, that are going to help answer the questions or calm some of the fears that people might be having in this, in this period of, um, uh, you, you know, in this period of time where they're, they haven't maybe 
officially shown up to the school yet you know there's there's still an opportunity for them to you know go elsewhere so um i think it's i think it's uh there's there's a lot of opportunities to to talk about some of the smaller things um what's the experience going to be like you know is is a big one i think that's great yeah user generated content day in the life of like those are all things i'm hearing from other people who work in your space too so that's great this actually reminds me of a video I like randomly watched like years ago about the commute from like a suburb of Seattle across the, I think the, was it the 405 bridge? I forget which bridge it was, but it's like the North bridge that you can take into Seattle. And someone just recorded like a 30 minute dash cam video with no edits. And it had like hundreds of thousands of views. And I, I was like, how does this video have this many views? <laughs> And it's not like the guy had a bunch of other videos. It was like he had a few dash cam videos and this one really like, you know, popped off and went viral. And it just makes me think like people just wanted to experience like maybe they're moving there or like they were looking at a house in that neighborhood and they wanted to remember <laughs> what the commute was like. But yeah, that's interesting. I think it's such a, yeah. And it's surprising, but it's also not surprising when, you know, when you, if some, if you have a hot question on your mind about, you know, what's something like, like, what's the commute like, you know, for instance, and you have someone that's just like, this is literally what the commute's like, <laughs> you know, it's not like a poppy, like ESPN sort of montage of the commute. It's like, just check it out. Um, and that's why that's, it's such a great example. I'm glad you mentioned that about video length. And I, I hear, I don't think, I don't, I don't think there's a video that I have produced where it wasn't mentioned in the pre-production about how this needs to be short, you know, because people's attention spans are, are so, um, so short. Um, it's always, always, always part of the equation and very top of mind for marketing teams. It's like, it's like the first consideration is we need to make this short. Otherwise no one's going to care. Um, but it's sort of like, well, let's make sure we create something for the right people that are going to care. <laughs> you know, um, and then let them make the decision where they want to drop off. Um, you know, but, it, but it's sort of like, if you're, if, if all you're doing is making decisions based on it, you can, you can make a really boring 30 second video is what I'm trying to say, you know, <laughs> you know, at that, that equally as many people don't watch as like a 30 minute video. That's, that's really, um, that's really resonating with people for the right reasons, because you've, you've given them something that is, that is resolving something in their brain, you know, like something as simple as that. Yeah. I like that. And it, it, it kind of reminds me that like, sometimes I have a hypothesis. Okay. This, this podcast clip is going to do really well. And then, you know, it tanks. And then the episode that I thought was not going to do well is, is going viral. And, and sometimes, you know, as a content creator, I, I feel like you have to just test a lot of formats, different links, um, you know, different like video creative uh, topics we, like we mentioned. And, and sometimes you can't just always feel like you have a gauge on everything that's going to perform well or not well, because a lot of it, the market has to test and you have to be uh, the proponent to, to test all those different formats and everything we just mentioned. Yeah. And I think, and part of that, that storytelling structure, that old normal turning point, new normal um, that I mentioned that I, I, the way that we think about it at unveiled is a little more complicated. Um, but just in the way that I teach it, it's, it's a very simple structure, but like having a good hook, um, is so important. That's not something that, um, uh, that's not something that's in that little three part structure, but, but it is very important to hook your audience with, with something that says, this is made, this was made for me. This was, this is something that I know I'm going to relate to, uh, and resonate with. Um, and, and, and a good hook is typically not like my name is so-and-so and I'm the president of such and such college, you know, um, really a good hook should say, it should answer the question. Like, what is this video about? What am I going to learn? What's the value I'm going to get from this, from this story or, or in the case of like, you know, maybe it's a, you know, a story, story of an, a, a, you know, alumni success story or something, some sort of soundbite that isn't just my name is blank and I graduated from blank. It's, it's maybe a soundbite that, that really kind of draws people into like, kind of gives them a sense of what 
what this this video is about. We did um we did a video for um one of our clients is a is a business school Walsh College here in Michigan, and one of the student testimonials or it was alumni testimonial that we did um, was about a guy that was fired from his job um, and then ended up sort of upskilling, got, got his degree uh, from Walsh, ended up graduating there and then becoming like the president of the, the, his, com the competing company <laughs> that he got hired oh, no from, <laughs> which was like just an amazing, that's an amazing example of like a from to kind of, kind of story. Um, uh -huh. But the very first line we had was like, I can't remember exactly what he said, but something like, I never thought that I would lose my job, you know? Right. And right there, it's sort right. of like, oh, what, why did he lose his job? What happened? You know, what, then what, how did it end up? You know, you're sort of opening a, opening a, like a story gap, like a, a, a gap that people feel compelled to close in their mind. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So some of that's important too. <laughs> That's great. Well, I like the example with the Walsh uh, case study because I actually read a little bit about this and um, I know you worked with them as a client and um, you helped build content for them, but they actually did a good job of taking some of your content and reusing it and repurposing a lot of it so that, um, you know, they could create different formats and different types of video content from it. And I think it's, I'm, I'm very guilty of this as well as is like, what can I do that's new? What can I do that's new? And um, I'm trying to think about, you know, all the other past episodes I've recorded and organizing them and using bits and uh, little bites from each episode, even if it's a year old, to see how I can repurpose it and uh, provide value to the community today. And so I know you're doing a little bit of that and suggesting some of that with uh, your podcast and your clients. And can you tell us a little bit more about how you're accomplishing that or seeing that being accomplished? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that... I, I, I really believe in what I saw in, uh, cause I, I worked for a previous production company. I, I've been doing this probably coming up on 15 years now. And I think a big pattern that I see is people, um, organizations of, of all kinds, not just higher ed, just any, you know, organization, uh, approaching video as like a one-off project and then letting it sit on the hard drive. Like when you hire, um, a video vendor or you shoot it internally or, or whatever it is, it's not just the video that's, that's valuable. It's not just the end result video, but all those ingredients that went into that video can be used to create other videos. And I don't think that enough organizations, um, really have that as part of their strategy. Um, but, uh, Walsh College, uh, my, my friend Jay Kruger, he's the, the director of creative marketing over there. And actually when, when Unveiled was just starting, um, I had gotten connected to Jay through a mutual contact and we got on the phone and, I, I, you know, w when I was kind of trying to figure out like, um, you know, how, how to structure like our video offerings, uh, I talked to a bunch of marketing directors at colleges. Jay was one of them. And he was like, he was like, you know what, you should not just do like, cause at the time the idea was monthly student or alumni testimonials. And it was just one video. And that was that he's like, but you should, you should like give them all this other stuff too. Like, like there's so much, there's so much uh, opportunity within just that one story, you know, to help schools have like all kinds of other stuff that they can deploy in their, in their social media. So like a lot of what, um, our subscription model is today is because of that conversation with, with Jay. And he is just, a, a, just a serial repurposer. And I've learned so much from him. Um, so we, we did uh, last year, we did a commercial. Um, uh, they had sort of done a rebrand. Uh, so we did a commercial that came out of that. And then these two alumni two one was a student, one was an alumni story. So the alumni story being the one I mentioned of the, the guy that got fired. Um, another guy was, uh, that we, that we told, um, his name was a shock and, he, um, his, uh, his story was like, he got like tens of thousands of dollars stolen from, from him. And then he got real mad and then went into data security. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and so now, now that's what he does. He, 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 he does data security for, for a company. Um, but just, it was a two day shoot, uh, very, you know, very, very, you know, kind of 
simple approach, not not like a really long, like a lot of, lot of, lot of shooting, but a two day shoot. And they, long story short, you know, they, Jay had enough content, B roll content and interview content to make so much more content out of, out of that for, for years to come. He's on his, we did one commercial for him that he paid us for. And then now he's on his 10th free commercial. <laughs> uh, he's taken all this content and just continually rewrote the script and use this in different ways. Um, and, and, and put out 10 additional like commercials that have been on TV and stuff that, that we had nothing to do with. And I see that and I'm like, I love that. Like, <laughs> you know, I have a vested interest in them continuing to hire us, but I actually really love seeing, you know, seeing organizations repurposing stuff like that and really getting the most out of uh, one investment in video. Cause I think that's, that's how it should be. And then not only that, but they, they've taken the footage that we made and um, they use it for still images. So they, they create a lot of their paid ads, like banner, you know, still image ads or whatever are from this B roll that we shot and they'll just drop it in Canva, put some text over it, whatever. Um, so it's, it's been really fun to watch how their content has really transformed because, uh, you know, before we started working together, it had been years before they, it, since they had done a, a, a last commercial. And so, um, they had, they really had sort of started dipping into like a lot of stock imagery and like just a lot of stuff that just didn't feel authentic, uh, to them. So, so it's just a good uh, example of how like one investment in video, um, can really fuel your content for a year, two years, three years, uh, however much you decide to continue to repurpose that if you have a good strategy in mind for, um, for how to keep using that stuff. That's fantastic. And I, I wasn't even thinking about the still image is still image repurpose as well. I'm sure everything's filmed in super high definition and all you need the definition to fit is, is a phone now. So, right. <laughs> um, like, yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Using the still images from the video for, uh, whatever purposes you want. That's great. It's a really good yeah, example. I will say when we filmed the the commercial, this didn't this stuff didn't really make it into the commercial, but we we did a whole scene of just portrait shots, like you know, there's their student and alumni and stuff, um, just kind of sm smiling in the camera, kind of giving us this sort of Fortune 500 sort of CEO <laughs> you know, pose or whatever. But like a lot of those people ended up using that as their headshots, you know, on, on, you know, cause we gave, we gave the individuals their, their footage and, um, those became a lot of people's headshots, like, uh, you know, LinkedIn or whatever. Um, right. Certainly video is not, a, 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 it's, it's not a replacement for a photographer. Um, because when you take a moving image and you stop the image, there's going to be, mm -hmm. you have to stop it at just the right frame to get a crisp image because there's motion blur in play with a with with a video but in a pinch um i i would say you know 60 percent of the still images that i use come from the videos that we make <laughs> that's great yeah that's such a good repurpose that i didn't even think about that's awesome and i another thought i had is is, is i'm guilty again of this but like when you run the same ads as someone you know that's paying for them if you see them you know a few times you're like oh this is outdated you know we can't use this anymore but from a student or pers student perspective a prospective student perspective they're maybe seeing it only you know a few times in their life cycle and they probably hopefully won't see it you know when they're a sophomore because it was an ad targeted to them as a pers prospective student or a freshman and so like you know maybe the frequency at which you think you're seeing it as someone who works in the staff or marketing comms team is actually a lot lower for your audience too. And so there's probably a, a big opportunity to use content for a, you know several years just based on what you were saying. Yeah, one of the earlier episodes of of my podcast, we had a guest on there. His name is Justin Simon. Um, and Justin is a great follow on LinkedIn. Um, he, his whole business is about helping organizations repurpose content. And he's got this like content repurposing roadmap that you can download and uh, super good. Uh, but that was a great episode because like one of the things that he really drove, the points that he drove home was like, if you think 
your audience has seen something like a hundred times and they're sick of it, they're probably just starting to see it. <laughs> like, the, <laughs> like your content is so much more of a blip on the radar in, in other people's minds than you think it is. Um, mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to repurpose content and sit and, and, and come at your audience with a, with a similar point of view every time that you think they might be sick of hearing, but they might just be hearing it for the first time. That's awesome. Well, I think we'll, we'll kind of wrap things up there. That's a great point to make. I'm wondering, John, where can uh, our listeners follow up with you or any of the things you've got going on? Yeah. Um, would love for people to check out the podcast. It's called Higher Ed Storytelling University, wherever you get your, your podcasts. Um, you can follow me on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, my last name is spelled A-Z-O-N-I if you're searching for me. Um, and then I have a monthly or a, I'm sorry, a weekly newsletter that I send out um, that kind of goes deeper into some of the things we talk about on, on the podcast, but also, um, you know, talks about other, you know, content marketing inspiration and, and, and insights. And you can sign up for that at unveiled.tv slash newsletter. Unveiled is spelled U-N-V-E-I-L-D. Awesome. Go sign up for the newsletter, everyone. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, John. Thanks so much for joining the show today. It was awesome having you. I love any topic around content marketing. So this was definitely something I, I really like. So I appreciate you for joining. Yes, yeah, a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, everyone. Please catch us on the next episode of the Higher Ed Demand Gen Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Three things I want to give you before you go. Number one, reminder to sign up for my free weekly newsletter all about creating content that resonates emotionally with your audience. And you can do that at unveiled.tv slash newsletter. Unveiled is spelled U-N-V-E-I-L-D. Number two, if you've enjoyed this episode, share it with someone. Share it with your team, your boss, your dog whatever. And if you're not already subscribed, I'd love for you to do that. Uh, number three, reach out to me. If you have comments, questions, you want to talk about a video project, whatever. My email is john at unveiled.tv. John is spelled J-O-H-N. Or follow me on LinkedIn. If you're searching for me, my last name is spelled A-Z-O-N-I. That's all for today. And I look forward to catching you on the next episode of the Higher Ed Storytelling University podcast. Thanks. Thanks.